So welcome everybody. Welcome to um, Hot Song Podcast. Today is April 11th, 2024. The topic for this evening is universal energy. So um, what is universal energy? Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about what is universal energy, and then there's personal energy, and then there's universal energy. And why do we want to access universal energy? What's the, and what are the benefits? And how can we actually get more of the universal energy? So that's our topic of exploration today. And um, let me just pull up my... Um, Pull up my notes. Okay, so actually, I think it would be a good idea to just do a short meditation before I go into the topic for tonight. So let's just take a deep breath in, breathe in through your nose, and just let it all go. Breathe in again. And let it all go. Breathe in one more time. Let it all go. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for your body. So just use your breath to get your body to be more relaxed. Pay attention to wherever it is in your body that may be holding on to some tension and just Set the intention for that part of your body to just soften, to relax. And when you feel that your body is more relaxed, and then the next thing is to focus in on your heart. Just breathe all the way right into your heart. Do this a few more times just to allow your heart to become more open. Breathe into it. Bring more oxygen and energy into your heart so that your heart can just naturally open up. And as you Set the intention to open up your heart. Also set the intention that you want to call back your own energies. Call back your attention all the way back to your own body. Right now, let it all be about you and your body being in this moment in your body. Allow yourself to bring back all the attention that you have been sending out to people, places, and things, whether it is where you're working or interacting with your family, with friends. In this moment, take back all of your attention 
and energy to yourself. Come back yourself. Come back to this moment. Be with your body. Be absolutely present to your body. Feel everything in your body. Connect with your body a hundred percent. And when you feel that you are present in your body, present to your body, when you feel more of yourself within this body, then take another deep breath in. Let it all go. Come all the way back to your body and open your eyes. and stay present in your body. Welcome back. Thank you, Vini. Mm, you're welcome. It's a little different now, does it? Okay, so we're talking about universal energy today. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I want to talk about universal energy. As you, as you know, I took, I'm taking a few classes, um, some workshops now, and one of them, it's about healing. And um, so it's, they do talk about this concept of universal energy. Um, I'm not able to repeat everything that I have heard recently. It's, um, however, I do want to emphasize one thing is that we, um, yes, we have this body and we have energy within our body. However, um, we have access to a lot more energies outside of this body. And so that's why I want to bring in the concept of personal energy and universal energy and to kind of um, talk about how these two play off each other. I am not I don't want to use the word play, play against because it's it's not an against. There is not it's not um personal energy versus universal energy because within personal energy there is universal energy. Um energy as I mentioned in previous podcasts that energy is because it's subtle. So you can't really pass it off and say, okay, this is personal, and then this is universal, and then this is something else. It is, energy cannot be separated out. So that's why personal and universal, it's all depending on the focus. So let me just talk about what is personal energy first, so that you, you, know, you can get a um, better sense of what the what universal energy is. Personal energy is energy that uh, we run within our body, that run through our body. Um, there are lots of energy. So if you look at your um, physiology, your whole body, that there is a, like in the middle of your head, if, if you kind of look, if you kind of um, feel about it, there is a 
it's called um like that's where all of your the the bones of your skull come together so when we were young this this um spot in your head actually there is a very small hole it's not completely covered as we get older the um, that hole in the top of our skull gets smaller and smaller as our skull becomes um, more um growing together and how are the energy that runs through our body is actually running through that and it enters our spine and it goes all the way through our body and it comes out at the um the the, the, the tailbone and then it loops through our body so we and and that's how the energy actually runs through the middle of our body and it's 360 degrees. So there's energy beyond our body and it's all around us. Um, Steve James has mentioned that, you know, um, like two inches is really energy for your physical body. If you go into, um, I, for, I forgot about the, <clears throat> what it is, but each, inch of energy that is beyond your body has a particular function to support your body so that's why people say that okay you have you know yeah um you have emotional body you have mental body the astral bodies so the fact that we have layers of energies that is beyond our physical body is um, a known fact because we um, there are instruments now that can measure our aura, that can actually take pictures of our aura. And also people who have um, been able to train their, their eyes to pick up subtle energy, they can actually see aura. And they would see it as um, like a, a layer around your body. And they, it has certain colors and the different colors can convey qualities and um, properties about the nature of those energy that's beyond the body. So back to personal energy. Personal energy is really the, the, the set of energies that is circulating our body specifically to make sure that the body um, can run properly. So it's not just the um, not just the the body fluids or nutrients that that is supporting the vitality of our physical body. It's also energies actually run throughout our body to make sure that um, we can relate to our, our environment properly and and also to bring in. Um, what is called universal energy as well, because we are not a closed system. We take in energies from our environment so that like when you walk into a room, some of you who are more sensitive, you will be able to sense the vibe of the room, whether the room uh, has a um, serious vibe to it or a heavy vibe or, you know, any, anything in between that. Why? That's because uh, that's the energy that is coming through our body and our body is actually able to um, pick up the quality of that energy that is going through our body. So that is what the personal energy is for. So now what is universal energy? Universal energy is actually anything that is not personal. I would consider that as universal. Why? Because um, it is outside of us. And well, oh, okay. Let me let me rephrase rephrase that. Um, it is outside our body. So um, not necessarily outside of us because we are not just the body, not just the physical body. We are also the energies of our body, we are actually much bigger than the physical body. The physical body is, is a vessel that 
is used to be able to um, sense, to make sense of the energy that is outside of us. So, and so what are the energies outside of us? Other people's energy. Um, so our, our family members, their energy is part of universal energy anyways. And then also there is the um, energies that is the, um, for example, I'm Chinese in um, ethnicity. So the, there is a, there is um, a pool of energy that, is, that really has, that resonates with being Chinese. So I'm part of that energy as well. And that is universal. It does not matter where that person is, if they are, if they have, um, if their ethnicity is considered Chinese, then we are all part of that pool of energy. And so being Canadian is another pool of energy, kind of universal energy that we are a part of. And then also um, Earth is another big pool of energy that we all are a part of. And then Earth is a part of the, the, the our, a solar system. So that solar system also is a part of that universal energy. And our body, our physical body is actually linked through our access to universal energy to all of these different um, quantum pool of energy. So that's the that's what the universal energy is. Universal energy is actually what links our body with the rest of the universe. And and that's how that's why I want to talk about universal energy because um, we are moving like we've gone through a period where we are um, very body centric. A lot of people, even up until now, still believes that we are this body and be, beyond this body, there is nothing else. If it's not part of this body, then it's not me. And if I cannot see it, I cannot touch it, then it's not there, which of course is not true. However, um, that is why we are moving beyond personal energy now. And we are getting into um, incorporating more and more of the universal energy through us so that we can get back to that conscious understanding that we are actually, everyone, everything is connected. So that is the oneness. Yes, question, please. Yeah, I was, I was just wondering, uh, are the, the energy, energies of the, of the trees and, and the energy of the sun and all those energies are also um, universal energies? Yep. Okay. Very much so. Okay, so in any bird or animal or tree or flower or any anything else that has anything that's got everything <laughs> yeah yeah all even all even of... even rocks even rocks have energy absolutely yeah rocks okay. are um rocks are it's a life form we think of them as rocks and we we don't think that they are they are alive however they actually are alive. It's just that they are not um, alive like us. It's a very different form of liveliness. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and they do they move, but they move so slowly that we'd never see it. I am not certain if rocks move, but I do know that certain kinds of rocks, especially um, crystals, they do move, but they move in very minute, um, like it's not easy, it's not noticeable. They do vibrate, let's say. Okay, yeah. So they, um, rocks are actually more 
Well, they are um, really uh, so rocks exist first within the planet. As a planet, there are rocks. So that's that's what the planets usually are made of. And then as time goes on through the, the different elements, um, the rock is just one element. Then there is air, fire, water, all the different elements come together and they crash upon each other. They they and then it actually combines molecularly molecularly in a way that actually gave rise to very simple life forms that actually move. So and that's how you know, planets evolve to actually have um, a single cell animals and then it gets more complex until it gets to other animals until it gets to some form of human beings until it gets to us so that's yeah. so so, wrong. so yep. basically i understood the about the energy so wherever i we go the conversation or the place we go we do collect that universe energy and it could be it, that way we are collecting the positive and negative all the time and that is part of energy yes if you if you don't consciously choose mm -hmm. if you're just unconscious then yeah whatever it is that is so your your body and um, your unconscious mind will bring in whatever energy from the universe depending on your frequency you would attract those energy into your body so to clear that the negative especially the negative consciously subconsciously we are collecting all the negative stuff and we literally when you're there at work or somebody you don't want to hurt somebody and say yes 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 that means we are i am swallowing that thing because i'm participating in that conversation so the energy has been exchanged how do i get rid of it in, at the end of the night um that you're getting ahead now <laughs> i will talk about okay. it later on okay. hold that thought okay yes adina question uh yes uh, is the ancestral energy personal energy or universal energy um very good question it's a bit of both actually um it's a bit of both i'm the reason why i say that is that um yes it it is included within your own energies because we carry all of the the the, the previous all of the um our ancestors energy and also our past life energy as well mm -hmm. so that is that makes it personal so so then that is there is a layer within our i think it's about eight inches so it's part of the Akashic record, and there is mm -hmm. an Akashic record uh, around eight inches. Mm -hmm. for, um, however, there is also another way to think of it is that, you know, all of that is actually, um, if you look at it, time is not linear. Like real time is not linear. Yeah. So that means everything is happening all at once and you are connected to that so that actually also makes it universal as well so it's okay okay thank you 
Okay, great question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions before I uh, continue on? Okay, so let me continue on. So why, why do we want to access universal energy? So benefits of universal energy is that it is pretty much limitless. Um, why do we want to tap into limitless energy? Like for healing, it's like if you're only using, relying on your own um, body's energy to heal, then it's not as, um, it's not as effective. Whereas if you consciously pull on the universal energy and to allow to kind of widen because yeah I mentioned that universal energy is always being incorporated into your body but it's usually not a, um, a very I would say big volume but if you consciously pull in a bigger volume and a higher vibration frequency, then you have access to any kind of energy that you want to. We have, um, you can call on fifth dimension energy, sixth dimension, you know, all the way up. So you can call on any kind of energy. You can call on, let's say, if you know somebody who has, um, particular uh, I would say skill set and you want to pull on that you can actually call on that as well so why we want to get to um, play with universal energy more is because universal energy is limitless it's only limited by your imagination we can actually call on those energies and they it does not mean that, you know, when we call on it, then it is going to, you know, come. It, like, it may come. However, it also depends on how your body resonates with that energy as well. So that's something that I would be talking more about. Yes. Question? Any question? Go ahead, Charlotte. You have one? Oh, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't they hearing me? <laughs> like, I'm just wondering, would there be beings Would be we would be calling on? Like, could we call on, like, I don't know, the Arcturians or somebody to be to help us to heal? Absolutely, you can do that. Okay, okay. You can call Great. anyone that you resonate with. Um, for example, like Archangels. Mm -hmm. I usually go, I like to call on Archangel Raphael because um, like I, I usually get pretty good results with Archangel Raphael. And it really depends on um, your needs. And also on your own tradition as well. So if you, you know, like it, it's each, I would say each religion has its own um, collection of saints or um, like as ascended masters that has higher abilities that you can call on. So depending on who you are, you may want to, let's say, call on Mohammed or call on um, Buddha. So it really depends on what resonates with you. You can call on anyone. Okay. Okay. So- Thank you. Yeah, you can call on anyone. And also, I did mention that it now now um it also depends on how your body is 
resonating with that particular um, set of energies that you're calling in. If you, there are some energies that may not resonate with your body very much, or maybe because there is some blockage in your body that you can't, you don't, even if you call on the energy, it can't really come through to work the way that you wanted it to work. In those cases, then you need to um, just clear those energies out first. So, how do we how do you them? know? Like what I need to clear? What do you need to clear? Okay, so, <clears throat> um, I think it's best to um, bring on example let's say i i want to see i want to see energy for example i want to see energy so i i'm asked for let's say i ask for um sifu james because sifu james uh, can see energy so he is for me he's the living master of that ability so i would call on sifu james energy to assist me to to be able to see However, when I call on that energy, I would I I may um, start to have fear coming up because you know. <laughs> See what James also mentioned that the first time his um, his third eye completely open, he was able to see people that other people don't see so I was like okay I do not want to be able to you know when I go to bed or even when I go into a washroom is to have you know all of these people around me even though they are not in my uh, physical reality but if I can see them it's kind of awkward <laughs> so <laughs> that fear may come up so that's something that I need to clear because if I have that fear, then yeah, the likelihood of me being getting that kind of um, having that kind of a scenario is probably going to be a higher probability because you attract what it is that you you um, by your fear you actually make yourself more vulnerable to have that something like that happen. So then you need to clear, or I need to clear the. Um, the fear of you know seeing things that I'm not that I don't want to see, so that I have to work on myself. So how do I work on myself? Just um, pulling in. So just just have a short meditation to calm myself down first, and then get to the point where I can um, really relax my body and relax my mind. And then um, I would just set an intention that I want to work with the, the fear of being able to see subtle energy. And because um, energy goes where you where your attention goes that actually puts me in touch with that you know, set of energies that is running the the fear in the background that I don't usually that I don't usually um have access to so when I actually feel that that I I'm in touch with that set of energies that is holding the fear in place within my my energy field. Then what I do is just um, set the intention that I want to bring in. Um, let me see who would be a good person to bring in. I would either do connect with the highest frequency version of myself or I would just um, bring in or I would bring in um, source energy and then just 
step into that. Step into the, the stream of man energy that is either source energy or the highest frequency version of my soul. With the intention to work with that releasing, or I, I shouldn't say even releasing, is to actually set the intention that I want to work with the fear of seeing subtle energy. So just observing how those energies, because whenever you start to observe something, you change it. You change whatever it is that you're observing. And that change is going to shift how I experience the fear. And when you shift something, it even slightly, it will never come back. You will never experience it exactly the same. So then that's that's how I would work with um, releasing something or, or shifting something. Is just call on a higher frequency of energy and be in that that stream of higher frequency energy and just observe the set of energies that you want to work on or set of emotions that you want to work on or even a something that happened in your life that you don't like then you know that how you feel about that situation is a set of energy. So you just observe that set of energy. When you observe something from a higher um, viewpoint, it, you shift it. Once it is shifted, you don't experience it exactly the same as before. So is that helpful? It is helpful, yes. I was practicing while you were uh, guiding. Yes, you do feel like when you connect with your highest self, you do feel like the kind of a neutral space. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you shift a little bit here, there, yes. Yeah. So this is um, something that for me, that is the best way of shifting something that you want or working with something that you want to um, make a change. Um, mm -hmm. Why do I say don't even think about releasing or letting go of? It's because um, it's like res it's resistant. Because if you if you resist something. Um, you actually make it worse. Whereas if you go to neutral and you just allow universal energy to come in to start shifting it, um, you just have faith that the universal energy is going to reconfigure that energy into something that is going to suit you better. So when you do that, then you don't run into the resistance because every time you resist something, it's like, it's like hitting against a wall. There is a counter resistance. Mm -hmm. Actually, whatever you resist actually persists. And that is very true energetically. So that's why being neutrality, being in neutrality is the most powerful place that you can be. 
when you are neutral and you just call in a higher um, frequency energy to come in to it will naturally shift the energy mm -hmm. and it will shift it in a way that is you will experience it differently now it does not it does not give you any control at all. You can't control it because um, it's universal energy. So there may be a particular reason why whatever it is that you want to you know, um, change may not be able to change completely to how you like it, but it will shift it enough mm -hmm. that um, it's the first step. And then if you don't like the, the the new situation then you need to just go in and do it again until it gets to a point until it shifted it into a um, into something that you can work with because every time you, when you call when you use this when you get into neutrality you bring on higher energies and it does not you know, work out the way you want it, it's because there is a reason why something still needs to be there. There is something that you need to um, look at. So that is the, um, you don't have a lot of, you don't have as much um, control. But when you actually let go of control, you actually can gain more insight and be able to get to a point where you can shift the pattern completely that it does not bother you anymore. It is no longer um, in your face anymore. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other comments, questions? Okay, good. So let's see. Um, universal energy. Okay. So how do we um working with universal energy there are a few things that have to be aware of first is the more you use it um the more effective it's going to be the first time you use universal energy you may not have built up that um that capacity to hold more of the universal energy. However, if you do more of it, actually more of universal energy would be able to come through you. So um, that's why when I do meditation, especially, you know, um, if I do healing meditation or if I want to do something with the meditation, what I usually do is is, you know, just relax the body, bring in pure love, or or even, um, or at, at least bring in unconditional love. So unconditional love is a frequency of energy. Pure love is another frequency of energy. So, so that's just the, um, to specify the frequency of energy that you want to bring in. And then what I usually do is actually just feel in my heart and then make sure that energy, whatever the frequency I want to, to bring in is to be able to fill my whole body. And also to release anything that does not resonate with that. And it is really to use the the pure love or unconditional love that you're bringing in to assist you in shifting whatever it is that does not resonate with those energies 
and usually I would connect with Mother Earth. So Mother Earth is um, a particular band of universal energy. And because we are, at least our body is playing on Mother Earth, so that is, I, I do like to bring in the, the Mother Earth energy as well. And then bring in um, the sun, so Father Sky energy, which is really all of the other energy that is outside of Earth. That is Father Sky. So, so I consciously have those two source of energies running through my body because um, usually I would have you know send send love to Mother Earth through the soles of your feet and then send love to Father Sky through the top of your head. So that is really um creating this unity of energy that brings in energy from the universe and also energy from Mother Earth from on top and from below and then together with my own energy so which is the energy of the body and the, the body soul and spirit that I have access to so that is usually that's what I do because um, at first when you bring in the mother earth energy and the Father Sky energy. I already feel um, a much more, I would say, potent set of energy coming in because um, that is invoking the energy of the playground and energy of the universe. So those two are pretty pot potent sets of energy to invoke. So bring those two in, and the more you bring those, or the more often you bring those two in, um, the more it can start to become innate to your body. It actually trains your body to be able to handle that, that um, influx of energy. So when I do meditation, that's uh, a lot of the times I would do that, especially for healing meditation. And the, the point of consistency, meaning consistently and consciously access the, the universal energy is to actually build up your um, the capacity of your body to be able to handle that level of energy and that frequency of energy as well so that's that's one thing to be aware of is the more consistently you specify and consciously bring in universal energy the um, the more your body would be able to handle these higher volume and higher quality of energy as well. Okay. And another uh, another one to pay attention to is really be impeccable to the words that you use, or I should say to the um, your intention. So before set your intention and be very clear about your intention. Let's say if your intention is to heal your body, for example, really set the intention of um, um for example, if I want to, let's say, heal, heal, heal my throat, for example, heal my throat, is before I actually um, do that, is to really 
feel into how I um how I feel about that body part. And to also look at, you know, um a lot of people don't feel that they are good enough or that they are worthy of healing. So, and those usually are very unconscious emotions. So look into those emotions and really scan yourself. So really ask yourself, do I feel that um, I'm worthy to command these energies, this universal energy to assist me in healing my body? And you really feel into, you know, um, the worthiness and all of that. And if you do feel that in some way you don't, you're not um, good enough to have that feeling, have that healing, then you need to do some work on, on really shifting the unworthiness or the not good, good enough, whatever the, the reason that your mind usually <laughs> or limiting beliefs that you have adopted that is um, in the background kind of sabotaging your ability to heal yourself. So handle those first so that when you really... Um, do the the healing on yourself is to scan your body to make sure that your body is how should I say it? It's kind of ready to receive that and that healing. Yes. Uh do we have to repeat this uh, process more often? Because I actually had some session last uh, Friday with friend, and for my my hand, we start to focus and uh, bring the healing energy to the part of, for each other. So each person has the spot. So. They did it for my hand, and I really feel better for a few days. But after that, again, the pain starts again. So um, I was wondering if we need to do that um, repeatedly. Um, it depends. OK. Sometimes wherever it is that you feel pain or you feel that you that the the problem that comes, that may not be the origin of the the issue. The mm -hmm. origin of the issue may be further up the body or further down the body. So usually if you um receive a healing and mm -hmm. somehow it came back, it's usually because there is another issue that you haven't taken care of. You mean emotionally? It could be emotionally, it could be physically. How do I know that then? Because this is the sign that I I, I have pain here. <laughs> What do I know the origin? Okay. You know so, the pain. So I okay. So how do you know that? That's that's going into more details than I would um want to go into right now. However, what I suggest you do is to um next time as to like when you do a healing on yourself is to make it open more open don't just heal your hand like if this this is where you have pain don't just heal here just stay just in the intention is you want to heal this and also wherever the origin of this pain is so uh -huh. okay so so then you you um make it 
bigger. So you're not just focusing here because yeah. sometimes you may feel it here, but the origin could be up here. It could be elbow, could be somewhere else. Uh -huh. So then, so heal this part and also the origin of this issue. So then, okay. you know, yeah, then it it kind of widens the um healing the ability to the uh the the widens the story I'm looking for the um, the what is the word I'm looking for widen the <laughs> the target okay what it is that you're asking for okay so in no. The, the the short form to you, your answer is you have to ask. Like if you have, let's say, have pain here, then you have to ask, is this the origin of the pain? Then, mm -hmm. and then you may get an answer is no. Then you would say, is it further up or further down? And then you, so then oh. it's the, you ask a set of questions. You do muscle testing on that. Then and then until you find a um the origin of the issue. Okay, got you. And sometimes the origin of the issue may be emotional. So right. Exactly. You have to ask that as, as well. You have that. Is that physical or emotional? So. So even for that, do we have to repeat it again, or only one time would be? We don't know, right? If one time would be okay. It depends. It also depends on how, um, because we are the one that create the reality. So if you're the kind of person that, so you have to ask yourself, do I, if you're the kind of person that you know usually doubt yourself, mm. then you may have to do it more than once. But if you're the kind of person that really, you know, have trust really? yourself, you know, mm. it's done, then it will be done just one time. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. A lot of it is about um confidence it's about um yeah it's character as well some people it's like even if you go get a haircut i have been to hairdressers that takes 15 minutes to cut my hair i've been to one that takes an hour to cut my hair so it really depends on the the person how their reality is being structured yeah thank you okay because we we are talking about energy so it's not like we flip a switch it's done when you flip it it's done it's not like that so mm. any other questions comments okay where where was i Okay. Um, question. Yes. So when you talk about trust, is there belief coming to play? Like if you believe that you could heal yourself, you do otherwise and you, you won't? Um, yes. That is definitely, it comes, so you have to work. So you have to um, sit with that belief. So that belief is sometimes, and there are other things that goes with it. Usually is, there will be something like, um, you know, not good enough kind of um, belief in it as well. So you you're not quite owning your own power yet. Right. Yeah. 
yeah, definitely belief as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, so all these things, it really um, contributes to your, um, how congruent you are with your intention, or I should say coherence. The more coherent your intention is, like if you, if you say something, if you want to create something and you absolutely have no doubt that it will, can be done and it will be done, then you are creating that scenario that it will be done. Whereas if you have other thoughts say, well, I've never done this before. I'm not sure whether I can do it. Um, I don't feel very good today. Maybe not today. Maybe I need to do it a few more times. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, um, I don't feel good enough to, to feel so good in my life, to have everything I want in my life. So if you have these beliefs that you, you are, these, these um, thoughts in your field, then your your intention is not coherent anymore. You say, I want, I'm going to heal this. I'm going to heal this wrist. And then there are so many other thoughts that does not support this part of your body being healed. It's also in the field as well. So when even if there's if even if you can um, conduct all the universal energy in the world, however, because there is no coherence in your intention, so the the, um, the energy is going to be splintered in so many different ways. So not a lot of energy is going to flow through your body to be able to create the results you want. So that's when you need to really think about all the unconscious beliefs that may be there. So, so how do you do that? How do you know what unconscious beliefs you have? Is you just um, create a really good connection with your body. And um, that is something that... Um, takes takes time to build up that that trust that you have with your body so build up a good relationship with your body take time to observe how your body operates like really spend time with yourself and then what you do is um you write your intention out okay you write your intention out Let's say my intention is I want to heal my right wrist. Mm -hmm. So each word, you write it out and then you say the word, I. Okay. And you feel the body because it's not, when you're just seeing the word in from your head, you're not connecting with the body yet. You have to connect with the body and say, I and you feel the body and feel, does my body feel like it's all together? Does it actually feel like an eye? Okay. And you may be surprised that a lot of the times I find myself, I don't quite feel like me <laughs> because I've been, you know, <laughs> watching to too many videos or having too many other thoughts in my mind that I don't quite feel like me at times. So then you need to bring yourself back, get to the point where each word of your intention, when you feel it in your body, you actually feel that there is like everything is green light. I think it's, like ready to go, meaning that your body actually resonate 
with each word and there is no um no feeling within your body as you as you say your intention that there's nothing in your body that does not support your intention and you will feel it if there is anything in your body that does not support i am healing my right wrist today or something like that you uh, so when you feel that you know whatever your intention is is completely aligned within your body then you know that okay you're going to get good results so that is um the best way to really get to the get this universal energy to do work for you. Questions, comments? So you you can't say that uh your intention how yeah i i yeah, i'm healing my risk right ah right whatever that's neutral what kind of thing is not neutral not to, not to say what's that What the situation is your uh your your wanting your how do you say that is best way to say it? Okay. Um <clears throat> Finding the right words to say, to 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 convey your intention. Is that the question that you're asking? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I always get confused. What what is your wanting, or what is your uh, how to say? The thing is, it cannot reach what you want to only create more resistance so what we don't say what we should say what's the best way <laughs> yeah it's, so you just you just say what you want so you know what you want right just put it in plain english and then once you put it in plain English, you know, what it is that you want to be done, then you go over each word of that and you feel it in your body to make sure that your body feel congruent, that it is ready to create this experience for yourself. So that is the work. Finding the, the the words, just be as, um, I would say, as direct as you want to. It's about feeling it in your body, connecting with your body and feeling how your body is responding to what it is that you want done. When, you're, when you feel that there is um, like your whole body is actually all in for that, creating that experience. You will feel it in your body. And okay, you also you. Feel, feel it when it is not all in. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Any other comments, questions? <laughs> okay. And that's it. That's all I want to talk about today because I want to leave um, some time for us to actually practice this. So as a group, we can practice this. Okay. Perfect. <laughs>